Hey guys, my name is Nibiri and it's time for another kicking of the week and today we're going to be finishing the drop that we've been working on. So let's just listen to the build up and then the beginning of the drop which we created in the previous episode and then I'm going to show you what I already did off screen. So like I said, I already did some things off screen and I just made a little beginning on the second part of the drop and I just made a few decisions on how I want to make the screech filter in. So over here with the screech, we have this part where it just starts playing and it just sounded a little bit too out of nowhere for me. So I had this little high pass uh, filter over here and I just have this balance which increases the amount of reverb that comes in as the screech progresses. So instead of just having it out of nowhere, right now it sounds like this. And although I like this rhythm, I felt that final part was just maybe a little bit too playful. So when I started creating the uh, second part of the drop, I just decided to loop the first part a little bit. So I cut up the pattern, just cut it up twice, and then only the third time I'm just repeating the whole playful ending over there. After that I just added the kicks underneath there, I just made some new kick rolls and I only added a reverb from the punch, so that it just changes the kick a little bit. If we'd listen to the kick and the screech together without having the reverb from the punch on the kick, it just sounds a little bit too dry in my opinion. But if we add that reverb from the punch on top of that kick, it just sounds a little bit more full. So let's just start creating the final part of the drop make some new kick rolls and maybe play a little bit with the fill for where the screech comes filter in and just finish this. And again, when I want to decide what to do in the final part, I just listen to everything as a whole and just see what comes up for my inspiration. <laughs> So I'm thinking of adding some really fast kick rolls after this little fill over here, but I'm not sure what to do yet. So let's just play around a little bit with the kick and then see if we maybe need a new screech pattern. Yes, something like this will work. I just hear it in my head already. And like this, I'm just pasting the reverb from there, just over the kick and it will just fit. I think a two bar kick roll like this as a whole will just work. And then maybe we can just add the screech on top of this and just see if it fits. And yeah, just maybe if we need to make that new pattern. Maybe something like this with the same effects kicks will just work. Let's just put the reverb in the right position. I wouldn't say it sounds bad, but maybe just repeating that three same kick rolls all over again is maybe just a little bit too dull. So let's see if we maybe need to change this up a little bit.
I just want to see if creating a new pattern over here with these final four bars will just create a little bit of a different flow because it sounds all right, but it's just not entirely there. So I'm just going to make this unique and we're just going to mute one of our two screeches because it was a two layer screech. And we're just going to first see and try if we can make a nice rhythm that will fit everything for the final part of the drop. So I'm just going to move this to the end over here because I feel that this as a little part of recognition at the ending is still nice, but I just feel like we need to change it up for the beginning of this final part of the drop. Maybe if we even put some smaller screeches in here, it will work. Let's see, just put this to a smaller version of one third. Make this a little shorter. I feel that's all right. I feel that this second part over here for the screech rhythm sounds nice. I copy and paste it just to the second layer of our screech and we'll just have to make a new pitch bend automation over here. But let's just first see if it just fits with the rest. I feel that that works. Let's just create a nice pitch band automation that will just make the screech come to life a little bit more. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and then make it unique. And this way we can just have these two layers already assigned to this made unique uh, pitch band automation. Let's just see. We can maybe keep some things kind of the same, but we still need to switch some things up. So maybe because this note was shorter in the earlier pattern, we're just going to make this a little bit longer right here and just have it come back at 50%. And this way we're just going to play around a little bit and see if we can get something nice. But I have to say I like the higher feeling for this second part of the screeches. So I'm just going to pitch them down a little bit less to just have them retain that higher feeling without pitching it down too much. just gonna make this one pitch down and then I think this should be done maybe let's just try something like this but I think this will already fit and I just hear a final thing that I want to change over here for the pattern and that's just gonna be a few stutter notes over here before this second thingy over here so this will just make it sound a little bit better. I think it will just flow a little bit better with the kick and the kick rolls. And one more thing that I'm hearing right now is just making this unique, giving this some more space and making these longer slide down screeches just a little bit longer because I feel that will just sound a little bit more uh, with the rest of the pattern. So let's just see if we can just switch up some details by just changing these effects kicks. And if you remember, I just had this long chain of effects kicks. So I'm just going to scroll a little bit through here and just see if we have some other ones. I think by just reversing them and just changing up the first one, 
it already just sounds a lot more unique but i also feel that we just can add a little bit of these uh, extra uh, secondary punches on top of this to just have a little bit more rhythm here i'd say that that works let's just focus on the part where the screech comes filtered in I just added this little bit of a kick roll over here. I pitched this one up for six semitones and this one for three, and it just sounded all right, and it sounded like this. But like this, it's just boring. It's just the plain same kick, and we just want to switch it up a little bit. So I'm just going to record this, and we're just going to make some effects kicks out of this. So like this, we're just going to mute the kicks that created the kick roll, so that we still have them, and we can change them afterwards if we'd want to. But I have just the recorded version over here and we're just going to give this its own mixer channel. And right now we're just going to make an FX kick inside of the mixer by just adding some EQ and distortion. And personally, one of my favorite EQs to just make some nice FX kicks is Shade. And Shade is just really nice because it has some more weird filter options that you don't really see in a normal EQ. So we can, for example, add this face over here and we can even make it have more repeats or we can add a comb or just other different things. And well, while we have this face, let's just keep it like this and maybe just see what will happen if we put, say, a distortion after this and we're just going to open this up all the way because we just like to have distortion opened up all the way. We want to make some noise with this. We just want to make some extreme FX kicks. And let's just listen to this, of course, and just see if by playing around a little bit with this facing uh, EQ, we can maybe change it up a little bit. Maybe it sounds all right already, but let's just listen. And like this, I'm just going to add some more peaks and in the bottom over here, I can add some LFOs so that I don't have to put a lot of automation clips in there. I'm just going to put some LFOs on the moving bits and this will just make it sound nice and organic. And if I'm done with this first bit of the LFO, I'm just going to add another one and maybe put this somewhere else. And I feel like just taking away a little bit of the low end might just create a nice sound. We're just going to put this on the gain. Otherwise, you could just, of course, put an uh, automation clip on the gain for this parameter. And let's just see, make it a little bit slower. And just see if this sounds nice. Like this, it's already a really weird EQ and you'd have to do your best to create this in Pro-Q or another EQ. But I feel just, um, yeah, just to clean this up, I just want to add a high cut that might just sweep through it like this. So that it might sound just a little bit more clean. At least, I think it will sound a little bit more clean like that. And now we have our main sound for these effects kicks. And I just want to try and make a little dip over here and just scroll through there and see if it just changes the sound a little bit. But I think we're already just reaching the finishing point. Okay, and we're just going to... And we're just going to put this third LFO on here so that it just moves a tiny bit, but I don't think it should move that much. 
just to create a little bit more of that organic feeling for these cake rolls, but I feel that we're already quite much done. I just checked it as a whole, and while to me these cake rolls just sound a little bit too much coming out of nowhere, just listen. An easy fix for this is just adding a high pass and making that sweep down so that it introduces itself a little bit. And there's just one thing more that I really want to do, and that's because sometimes when you have your FX kicks, they just um, stretch out the sound. The distortion really stretches out your sound, and the distortion will just keep this sound playing, for example, over here, while our normal kick is already playing, and we don't want that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of an automation on the volume of this channel, to just make sure that the channel stops playing when our main kick kicks in again. And I personally just like to really do that with uh, balance, just because then I don't have my uh, faders over here moving all the time. I just really get annoyed by moving faders in the mixer. So I just like to do that with balance. And just by doing this, we're sure that this really just stops playing the FX kicks with the distortion when our main kick kicks in again. So let's just finish this off by adding a little bit of details like crashes for example. And I like to add crashes on top of my kick rolls, but since we're already really going for this dry feeling over here with just the kick, I don't want to add too much, and I chose to use this drop crash sample over here. And it's just basically a clean crash sample out of Drumason, but it doesn't have reverb. So if you try to mimic this drop crash uh, technique that I'm using as well, I just suggest you use a more clean uh, crash without reverb so that you can always add some reverb if you feel like it. And you can also just add like a second bigger crash with a huge reverb after that to just create some more space. But I just personally really like to use some clean crashes for this without reverb. So right now we're just going to listen to the drop and just see where we need some crashes. Maybe on top of the kick rolls, maybe something else. And maybe one of these bigger crashes to make this drop flow a little bit better. So for example, I really feel that this drop just needs a crash over here and it might just stay like a clean one and maybe we'll add some reverb on this. So let's just lower the volume of this crash a little bit to just make it fit. And I just want to add a tiny bit of reverb on this. And of course, just a little bit of an EQ. We're just going to low cut this just to be sure. And just add a little bit of a room type of reverb that won't be that big, but just creates a little bit of space for our crash. Maybe something like this. And uh, yeah, let's just see if we can just make them a little bit better because, well, this ID over here just didn't work. And yeah, we'll just have to try something else. So over here I do want to add my crashes on top of these kick rolls and I'm just 
playing around a little bit with the size of them to just have a little bit more of an alternating feeling for this drop crash. Sometimes I even make them way shorter than this, but I just try to kind of mimic them with the size of the kick roll or the punch at this case. Maybe just adding it like this at the end, uh, just aside this right over here will just help. Sometimes putting a right on top of your kick will just add a little bit dimension as well and just an extra layer to listen to and it just adds a little bit more flow. And so I switched a few things up. Like I said, having these drop crashes is nice, but sometimes you still want to have these bigger crashes and I just changed it back into these bigger crashes and yeah, like that, it's just a matter of playing around and seeing what works the best for you. Like this, I feel that this drop is finished and we're done for today. Let's just listen to the build up and just see if you guys like it as well. And so, well, I hope you liked this and learned something from this, and I'll see you back soon again. Cheers!